Yeah, that's a no from me, dog. That is a no from me. All right, so in today's video, we're going to cover how to merge k-sorted arrays so it could be it could be any kind of list an array a linked list all that will change is how we deal with the structure it's not going to change how we solve the problem our input is going to be three sorted arrays this is key it's not a coincidence they're sorted they're going to be three sorted arrays and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the union between these sorted arrays as another sorted sequence. So we're going to output a sorted array from the three sorted arrays we get. We're going to get K sorted arrays. K is three in this case right there. How are we going to approach this problem? As always, we start with the intuition. We do not try to just jump straight into a problem, attack it. We see what do we already know? What do we already understand how to do? And how can we apply that to a problem generalized to K arrays? So let's start with something you probably already know how to do right now. So do we know how to merge two sorted lists. If you're familiar with the merge sort algorithm, this is something you should be able to do. So how do we merge two sorted lists? What is of best interest to us? This is what we do. We create a pointer on the smallest item. Notice how we only care about the smallest item in each array. That's for a reason, and we're going to see how that generalizes to solve the K sorted array problem. So now we have a pointer on each of these, and what do we do? We make a comparison between the two numbers that we have pointed to. Zero is less than three, so zero gets the first placement. And I want you to notice what I just did. What I just did is I advanced the pointer to the six. Why did I do that? I just extracted an item from the second array, and now the next least item in the array we're comparing against is going to be six. There's a reason we do that, because we want to compare the least items between these two arrays, because those are the comparisons that matter. Now, we compare three and six, which is less, which gets placed. Three wins. So now, we grab five. Five is next. So, so five is less than six. Five gets the placement. And now we're comparing six and seven. Six gets the placement, it is less. And notice that we've out of bounds on the second array. We have nothing to compare the other value to, so we know every value in the array that has items left is going to be greater than the greatest value in the second array. We've exhausted the second array. Now, all we do is just add the values from the first array. And now our iteration is finished. We've merged two sorted arrays. So now, what did we notice? Let's not worry about how this is a small example. Let's worry about what we were thinking. Let's worry about what mattered to us. What mattered to us was the smallest element in each array. Once we extracted that smallest element, we moved on to the next element that we extracted that smallest element from. We moved on to the next element in that array. So how are we going to generalize this to K arrays? Let's look at how we're going to think about this. And remember, when you're in a high pressure interview situation, you won't be able to think to your fullest capacity. This is just human nature. Like you cannot, stress will dumb you down and make you think worse than you normally do. But if you start with what you know, we started with what we know, two arrays, and now we see where our brain went. And now we can generalize our approach to three arrays, these K sorted arrays. So now, what did we do? We placed a pointer on all of the smallest elements in each array, nothing different from sorting two arrays. So now, what do we do? We take the smallest item between all three of these arrays. Which item is that? Zero. We could take it from array two or three, it doesn't really matter. We could take it from array two. So now, again, we're comparing the smallest items that have not been processed in every array. Look at where our pointers are sitting. Pointer, pointer, pointer. Now, what is the smallest item here? It's zero in array three. And now we're comparing three in array one, six in array two, six in array three. When we pull an item from an array because it's our smallest item, we advance the next item in that array. Nothing different from what we already knew. So now we take three from array one, it's the smallest item in our comparison. Now we're comparing five, six, and six. Five is the smallest item. Now we're comparing seven, six, and six. Six is the smallest item. We can take it from array two or three. Let's take it from array two. And so now we have ran out of elements in array two. That's fine. We're just comparing two elements now. We need the smallest of these two elements, six and seven. We're going to take six from array three. And now seven versus 28, we take seven from array one. And now we have one element left 
And the smallest element compared against only one element is that element. Let's take it. Wait, we just got an answer from what we already knew. We already knew how to merge two sorted arrays. We just generalized that approach to k-sorted arrays. So we haven't done anything different. We've just generalized what we already know to solve this problem, generalize the k. But there's a problem here. When I'm coding this, I wonder, when I have two sorted arrays, yeah, I can use pointers, but there's a problem when we have a generalized amount, k. How are we going to know the smallest elements between these arrays? How are we even going to know how to advance ourselves? The the key here is to know our data structures and know we can use a min heap to extract the smallest elements between these arrays. Our min heap will hold k elements at maximum. You're going to see how that plays into complexities, but it will hold k elements at maximum. We want the smallest elements between the arrays. That's what our min heap will do. And we're also going to use an iterator of sorts. If this is a linked list, you can easily grab the next value. If these are arrays, you need to create an, an abstraction where you can remember what array you pulled the item from when you put it into your min heap. So let's see how the min heap approach would work. Now we have a min heap to work with. We have our same arrays and we're going to see how a min heap helps us with this problem. We're going to do the exact same walkthrough, but we're going to see how the min heap is going to help us with this walkthrough. To begin this algorithm, we add the first items in all of the arrays to the min heap and the min heap gives us access to the smallest item between the k items we're going to insert. We might not insert all k items because an array might be empty, but we're gonna have a max k, that's going to be our upper bound on space for the min heap. So now let's do that insertion. So now we see that the min heap has three elements, three, zero, and zero. We're just gonna fetch the smallest element and grab the next element in the array. On the min heap, we annotate the items we put in so we remember what array they came from. If this is a linked list, you're gonna have instant access to your next node. You don't need to annotate anything, but if this is an array, then you're going to have to do that. What we do is we grab one of the zeros, we're gonna grab array two. We remove it from the min heap, add it to our answer. And now we remember that our item came from array two. So now we can look at the next element in array two. We see that it is six. So we add six to the min heap, remembering that it's from array two. And actually we won't even need those red arrows, we're just gonna be working from the heap. Because those arrows were just to show that we are pointing the stuff. The heap is going to handle everything for us because we annotate where the item came from. Now we pull the smallest item. What is the smallest item? Zero. What array did it come from? Array three. We add it to our answer. It's removed from the heap. We remove from the heap, add it to our answer, and then we add the next element, which is six. Again, we pull the smallest item from the heap, add the next item in that array. Smallest item is three, three comes from array one. And so notice, this is all we're doing. We're pulling the smallest element, our min heap gives us that access. It's going to be a log k insertion because we're holding k elements and we're going to have to traverse the depth of the, of the heap. We pull five next from the min heap, it's from array one. The next item is seven. So now we pull a six, let's pull it from array two. The next item in array two is nothing. Our min heap now has two elements. We cannot add another element here. So now all we do, no trouble, extract the smallest element from the min heap. The next item in array three is 28. No trouble here, extract the next smallest element, seven. Do we have another item in array one? No, we don't. Our min heap has one item now. All we can do is extract that one item. It is the min, that's what we pull out. And notice something, we ran out of elements in all of the arrays. Our min heap is now empty. What does that mean? We have placed all the items and notice we have an answer now. So that is how this algorithm works. That is how you merge k-sorted arrays. Let's look at the time and space complexity for this problem. So let's go into that now. We're going to assume we have a binary heap. In a binary heap or a balanced any kind of binary tree structure, we are going to have one plus the floor of log number of items in the tree levels. In this case, we have k elements at maximum in our binary heap. So we're going to have one plus the floor of log k levels. k is the amount of sorted arrays we're given, and n is the total items across all k sorted arrays. For all the elements across the k sorted arrays, which is n items, we're going to perform insertion. Insertion into a binary heap is going to cost us log k time. Log k time, why? because we have one plus the floor of log k levels. We're going to do that once. We're going to 
go across, we're going to add all of the items, and we're going to remove all of the items once from the binary heap. So we know that we're going to do two times the work. Insertion is going to be log k, and removal is going to be log k. And the reason for that is when we remove an item from a binary heap, we're going to replace that item with the farthest down and right left item. You can search how, how this is done, but it's going to be log k because we need to bubble down that item to restore the heap property after an item is replaced. You should probably research into that how insertion and deletion from a heap works, but let's continue. We're going to do that twice. N elements are going to be inserted, N elements are going to be removed. And this is across our whole algorithm. So we're going to do that twice, constants factor out, and our complexity becomes n log k. For each element, we do log k work. And this is how the complexity pans out. We drop constants. The space, at maximum, we're going to hold k items in the heap. We're going to hold the smallest item in every array at maximum. How many arrays do we have? k. So at max, our heap is going to hold k items. That is O of k space. That is our upper bound on space. So this is time and space for this solution. If you like this video, if this helped you with this question, subscribe to the channel like this video. I want to do more videos like this. Anyone that says this helps them. That really encourages me to do more of these. And I see this channel as a way of giving back for me. Subscribe, like this video, and...